What's up guys, it's Nishan again, and I am currently tuning my buddy Joe here. Um, he's got a 2012 Mazda Speed 3, and it has a speed performance uh, 2.5 liter stroker engine. Uh, some of you guys might remember if you watch a lot of the videos that I upload and post. This car um, I had once posted uh, on pump gasoline making just under 500 horsepower. If I recall, it was around 491 horsepower on, uh, on pump 93 octane. So Joe finally went ahead and uh, put this thing on some E85. We're actually running a E50 blend. Here's Joe right here. What up, son? What up, son? So, um, yeah, so he's got a really cool build, really clean. He really put a lot of effort into this. So I just want to show you guys, show you what it's about, show you what it's making. And uh, we're actually getting this car ready for the Slipstream... Um, uh, roll racing event at Pocono Raceway August 12th and I will be sponsoring that so I'll have a lot of uh, customers cars there including my own cars and uh, we'll be out there racing and just having a great time and uh, seeing how we do with the uh, against the competition so this is Joe's build again it's a 2.5 liter um, it is now on E50 uh, he made a couple changes since uh, the last time I've shown you guys this car um, Last time the car was obviously on 93 octane, now it's on E50, but there's also a couple hardware changes he made. Um, I believe, yeah, you had the 60, he had a 6062 in there. Uh, so it's still a precision turbo 6062. Uh, it's a Gen 2 compressor wheel. Um, he went and bought this uh, JMF uh, intake manifold that came off of uh, Speed Performance's Shop Speed 3. Uh, they were parting a lot of parts out, so he bought that manifold. Um, it's really uh, pretty much just a whole bunch of off-the-shelf type stuff. He did some really cool stuff though with like his um, his vacuum uh, plumbing and all that stuff. Joe's a pipe fitter by trade. That's what he does for a living, and uh, so uh, you know he's he's really good at welding and pipe fitting basically. So uh, he did some really cool stuff. You can see here on the boost controller, he's got uh, what is this stainless steel pipe or is this aluminum? I don't yeah, know. stainless. Yeah, stainless pipe, three sixteenths. Yeah. Yeah, three yeah. three six three sixteenths. Uh, stainless pipe that he bent himself to run his uh, boost control fittings, which is really cool, you know. Although, you know, um, silicone does suffice. This is, you know, this is just really solid. He's got compression fittings here, and so he's uh, he's plumbed some, some really cool stainless line there. You, uh, you even have a stainless line going to the turbo, right? Yeah, yeah so the, the turbo's boost source, uh, yeah, there, there, you know, right there's there. a, that's what, a one eight, it's a 1 8 MPT thread, right? Yeah, there's a 1 8 MPT uh, thread hole on the Precision Turbo that you use for the boost source, for the boost controller. He even has that as a uh, as a stainless line, so that's pretty cool. And then it goes back here and goes to his wastegate. So, at least at least you'll know you'll never have a, a boost control issue. You know, but that's cool. You know, I really like that. That's, that's pretty fucking badass. Uh, yeah, and um, for his intercooler piping, he's got all V-band and, and Vangent clamps. Uh, Joe did this himself. Uh, Pretty good welding, man. You did a nice job. Yeah, so. Uh, what else you got? You got V-bands on the uh, on the intercooler, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got V-band clamps there. It's pretty much like how my car's set up. I have I have V-band clamps on my intercooler, and then uh, I have a uh, the engine on my throttle body as well. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, the head is still just a 2.3 liter. Uh, dizzy head um, still has the stock camshafts Really the only thing that makes this a 2.5 liter is just the uh, 100 millimeter stroke and uh, the 89 millimeter bore yeah. yeah, so That's pretty cool um, Yeah, so it still has stock camshafts um, The head is just mildly ported not really much done to it um, Just really a quick port and polish job and uh, of course it has valve springs as well I believe they're they're Crower 65 or 75 pound springs. I don't remember what you put in here, but um, yeah. So it's just got valve springs, mildly ported head, and a 2.5 liter bottom end. Precision turbo 6062 Gen 2. All the usual JMF intake, CP exhaust manifold back there. That's a HTP uh, four inch intake. What color you powder coat this stuff? Uh, it's like cherry red. Cherry red. Did um. This was uh, coated by Beckham, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, everything in I there. ITG Engineering uh, here in New Jersey did all the powder coating. Really nice job. Mm -hmm. And it all matches, right? The turbo is the same. 
Yeah, the turbo's uh, yeah the turbo's coated the same as the intake and the valve cover, so that's cool. Yeah, so we're just finishing up tuning this thing. This is the split second controller to control his uh, auxiliary port injecting system. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty much done tuning it now. I'm going to show you guys what it's making, but um, we are uh, very close to maxing the turbo out. Um, if not, maybe the wastegate spring. He doesn't have a very uh, tough wastegate spring in here. I think it's only like a 16 pound spring, but I told him to only put a 16 pound spring. We weren't trying to push this thing to the limits. This is a street car, so uh, you know it doesn't need to make crazy power. It just needs to be reliable and have a lot of fun. There is one, one cool thing that uh, Joe has on this car is that he has a search tank uh, fuel setup. So I'll go over here to the trunk. And so Joe has a radium surge tank over here. And uh, this is what's actually feeding the engine. So Joe, can we actually lift up your back seat so I can just show like the stock uh, the fuel, the fuel pump uh, hat and basket over there? So if you lift up the seat over here, guys, on, on, on speed three. Yeah, let me grab the, uh, the light. So this is where the stock fuel pump is. So what Joe has done is he put a... Um, I believe it's a, a dish works right dw dw 65 c he just put an upgraded fuel pump in here but this uh the fuel pump that's in the stock tank is not what's feeding the engine the fuel pump in the stock tank is filling up the surge tank back in the trunk so the fuel tank in the pump feeds that fills up this surge tank and then joe has a uh ti automotive uh what is it the, the hellcat 525 liter per hour pump yeah. right yep. yeah so like on, on my speed three i have the walbro 450 pump um joe put the uh the four the 525 pump that that recently came out not too long ago that, that they rate as the, the hellcat fuel pump so he's got uh, quite a bit of fuel headroom now he's only running one single pump just one pump uh this this radium search tank is uh do you remember the capacity on this I think when you it's ordered? a little under a half a gallon. Yeah, it's not much, but um, it's only th this this search tank is only de was designed just to hold one fuel pump. Um, uh, Pablo runs a uh, a bigger search tank in his uh, in his Focus ST, the Speed Performance Focus ST, because that holds dual full Walbro 450 liter per hour pumps. This is just holding one 525, and that that's all this car needs. It doesn't need anything more. Um, this fuel pump is perfectly sized for the turbo that he's got and the power that we were looking to make. So this was already well thought out. Um, so pretty much what happens is the in-tank fuel pump in the tank, just shine the light over here, if you don't mind. It fills up the surge tank and then the, the, the 525 liter per hour pump pumps towards the engine. And then that's regulated with a regulator. And then the return on the regulator comes back to the surge tank. And then... If the surge tank overflows, what ends up happening is there's an overf overflow port on here, and then the overflow overflow. So I can't even speak today. <laughs> the overflow port goes back into the stock tank. So what Joe did was is he he used the bulkhead fitting here, and he drilled into the stock uh, top hat basket there, so that when the return side uh, comes back. And remember, the stock intake fuel pump is always filling up that surge tank. So at some point, it's going to overflow and fill it up. So then the overflow just goes right back into this stock tank, stock fuel tank. So the surge tank probably adds about, between everything, it probably adds about a half a gallon to the entire system capacity. But what's really cool, though, is that because he has the surge tank, he could run this car on like an eighth of tank of fuel or a quarter tank of fuel and he doesn't have to worry about starving the engine of fuel because the fuel pump is always going to be sitting in a full tank of fuel. That being the surge tank. So that's really cool. On my Speed 3, I have a Volvo 450 that just sits into the, into the, uh, in the stock tank. I have a Squash Performance Top Hat that I don't believe is, is made anymore. I don't think you can get them anymore. Um, so I kind of have to be careful. Um, Usually below a quarter tank, I don't like to uh, do pulls because I don't. I'm, I just fear, you know, basically uh, starving the engine fuel. It's worse in a drag racing situation because the fuel really, really, really sloshes around a lot. In a roll racing situation, not so much. Um, but 
Yeah, this setup is cool because of that. So if he wants to, I don't, I don't think uh, drag racing is, is Joe's thing, but if he ever wants to, he can run this tank really, really low, and then he can keep the car lighter because he doesn't have a ton of fuel, you know? A full tank of fuel can add over 100 pounds, so, you know, that's really cool. So yeah, that's what Joe's got. He's got the search tank set up. So again, the stock tank, the stock in-tank pump feeds the search tank. Then the 5 to 225 liter per hour pump feeds the engine's fuel rails. And then what comes back goes back into the search tank. And then anything that might overflow the tank goes back into the stock tank. So it's a true return style uh, fuel system. So on the front end, you can see his main, uh, his main fuel line comes over here. No, 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 that's his return, sorry. This is your main feed line. Yeah, coming from uh, behind the firewall. That comes to the high pressure fuel pump and it's teed. So the high pressure fuel pump sees um, the fuel first and then it runs into the fuel rail. And then the regulator controls the pressure. And then the return side connects to the stock feed line and he's using the stock feed line as a return which is more than sufficient for the power level he's making and uh, that's pretty much it oh yeah he's even got the push fitting for his um his boost reference on the regulator so that this regulator can increase fuel pressure one-to-one -one with boost and for those that aren't familiar with that um, the reason we run a fuel pressure regulator that increases boost one to one, I'm sorry, increases fuel pressure one to one with boost is because the fuel injector's flow rate is based on the differential pressure across the injector, not the fuel pressure in the rail. So for example, if we were running, let's say 70 PSI static pressure, okay? We were just maintaining 70 PSI all the time. When we get into, let's say we're running 30 pounds of boost, there's 30 PSI of pressure in the manifold, okay? And that boost pressure in the manifold is opposing the injector. So the differential across the injector is 70 minus 30. So the injector is only gonna flow for what uh, it, what it's rated at at 40 PSI. Because you have to think about it, the boost is, for lack of a, a better explanation, the boost is quite literally trying to stop the fuel from coming out of the injector. And then when the manifold's under vacuum, it'll actually want to pull fuel out of the injector. So if this was a normal port injected car, what would actually happen is, is under vacuum, if you had 70 PSI of fuel pressure in the rail and you had uh, 10 PSI of vacuum pressure, uh, the fuel injector would actually flow what it would flow at at 80 PSI because that vacuum is assisting to pull the fuel out. So, um, you know, granted in this case, it's just an auxiliary system. So it's uh, only being used when in boost. So, and uh, he's got the... Uh, He's got additional injectors on there because uh, this injector came from um, Speed Performance's shop car and they were running, the, they had a crazy fuel system. So this manifold was already drilled for that. So that's what he's running. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool setup. I'm really happy with it. It's uh, currently making about 680 horsepower. And uh, that's, that's pretty much exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, I don't want to push one single fuel pump to its limit. Although this 525 liter per hour fuel pump is, is still holding strong, whereas the 450 uh, liter per hour pump on E50 at a roughly a similar pressure, I believe we're somewhere in the, we're probably somewhere close to 80 PSI with boost for fuel pressure. So uh, the 450s get, gets pretty, really close to being maxed out with just one of them on, uh, on this ethanol content. So. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, the 525 is definitely holding up. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up tuning this thing. I'll talk a little bit more about the engine and, and the power band and uh, how the 2.5 is doing with this uh, Precision Turbo 6062. I'll show you some graphs, show you some runs, and then, um, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna bring this car to uh, the Slipstream Roll Race event. Joe's already uh, registered. Um, I'm already registered. Uh, I got a, there's a there's a few. I think there's a couple other speed threes coming, and then I have uh, a couple other customers coming out there with some uh, some American Muscle and some boosted V8 cars. So uh, we're gonna be there again. That's in uh, uh, Long Pond, PA, Pocono Raceway, August 12th. Uh, go to slipstreamre.com and you can uh, buy tickets if you want 
to spectate, or you could pay cash at the door. It's cheaper if you uh, if you purchase tickets online. So that's pretty much what we're here for today. We're getting this car ready for that. So um, thankfully, Joe, you came to me not the week of the event, and, uh, <laughs> which a lot of people like to do. Come to me the week of the event and tell me, hey, my car needs to make this much horsepower. And and I already bought my ticket. Well, like, and Joe's a responsible <laughs> human being, so. He respects he respects my busy schedule, so he understands. All right, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some pulls on the car. Um, well, probably just do the final pull because it's already done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fans on here because it is fucking hot, and uh, then uh, I'll show you guys what it's doing. This is what it made on 93. This was the uh, the last run files that I had saved from when we tuned it on 93. And we were just under 500 horsepower. And obviously we had to limit the power and torque um, simply due to octane limitations of just pump gasoline. Now normally if this was a, a 2.3 liter, uh, we wouldn't be able to get away with this much power on pump gasoline. Um, at least with this size turbo, uh, being that it's a 2.5 2 liter, uh, we have an increase in displacement and uh, what, what that actually allows us to do is uh, we don't have to uh, run such a high pressure ratio on the turbo so the turbo runs a little bit more efficient um, and you know it's just it's really nice to be able to make almost 500 horsepower on pump gas and uh, Joe Joe flogged on the car for quite a bit on uh, 93 octane and, and compression hasn't dropped nothing um, the engine is still healthy. So now we're at 690 horsepower. Uh, that's exactly where I want the car to be um, on E50. He has a uh, ethanol content analyzer here. That's an Innovate uh, ethanol content gauge. Uh, he's got the sensor mounted on the return line uh, right on the regulator. So uh, he knows exactly what his content is. I told him to uh, fill this thing up with E50 and that's exactly what he brought the car to me with. So that's nice. So, uh, yeah, this is exactly where I wanted the car to be. It looks like the power band uh, tends to kind of die off just right around, so right after 7,500. So, uh, that's about the highest we'll rev this thing. I, th I have the rev limiter set to 7,800, and uh, that's done via the N2MB watt box. So, we, uh, we're not using the OEM uh, ECU for rev limiting. I have another video where I talk about that, about running the watt box. So this car obviously has that. He's got the watt box uh, mounted in here in his uh, glove compartment. So I've already programmed that. He's all set for uh, flat foot shifting. He's all set for the rev limiter function. So such a fat power band. Uh, that's one thing that I really do like about this 2.5 liter. Um, I'm sure Joe's going to be able to get this thing to, to work fine on the street and at Pocono, but, uh, you know, this is just such an awesome power band to have. So, the 2.3 liter with the 6062 can sometimes be just a little lazier, um, but the 2.5 really does kind of help bring it to life. It is kind of, it's not too hot in here today. The, uh, the dyno temperature probe is picking up 87 degrees. 
I'm sweating like crazy. It's hot for me, but uh, it's it's not too hot um, in terms of uh, air temp for what the engine's taking in. Uh, let me pull up some data log here. We should be around 37 pounds of boost. Yeah, yeah, we're right at right about 37 pounds of boost there. Boost air temp is coming up on 120 degrees. So, yeah, uh, we're basically maxing this turbo out. This turbo, maybe if we put the stiffest spring in the wastegate that we can, we might get close to another 20 horsepower, but I think that's about it. I've tuned the 6062 several times, and it always lands somewhere in the 690 to 700 range uh, pretty comfortably. So Now, again, this is a 2.5 liter, so, you know, 37 pounds of boost, uh, you know, however, whatever amount of airflow we're moving to, uh, to maintain, let's say, 37 pounds of boost at 7,500 RPM, let's say that's, I don't know, let's say that's uh, 75 pound per minute. Um, that same airflow on a 2.3 liter will probably be somewhere around 41 pounds of boost or 42 pounds of boost. So because of the increase in displacement, um, we have a lower pressure for the same airflow rate. And uh, I've done a 60-62 on a nearly identical uh, Speed 3 with a 2.3 liter E50, same setup. And we were making, I think it was around 670 or 680 horsepower at, uh, what was it? Yeah, about 42 or 43 pounds. So, again, stock cams, mildly ported head. It was a near identical setup. So, yeah, well, I'm, this is pre this pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I'm all done here. Um, I might do another pull just for sanity check, just to uh, make sure the tune-up is perfectly on point. But, uh... That's pretty much where we're at. I'm really happy with it. This is perfect for a street car that you can take to uh, race events. Uh, I'm not going to turn it up anymore. There's no need. I don't need to. Um, my turbo doesn't have much left in it anyway, so there's no point. But uh, I really like this fuel pump. This uh, TI-525 fuel pump is really neat. I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, swap out my 450 for this pump just to have a little bit of extra headroom just for sanity's sake. But uh, yeah, this is the first uh, 525 pump I've ever worked with on, on any type of car. Um, so it's nice to see that even at uh, you know 690 horsepower to the wheels, it's still holding pressure rock solid. And uh, on, on one of the pulls, I had uh, uh, Joe record the fuel pressure. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, fuel pressure gauge to plug into the uh, Dino's uh, control module to log. Um, if I did, I would, but I just kind of went back to the old-fashioned uh, throw a camera on the gauge, and it was holding rock solid, so that was cool. So I really like this fuel pump. I really like this setup. It's it's pretty badass, in my opinion. Um, I have a 6266 on my Speed 3 basically making the same power, and I don't get this awesome of a power band. You know, it's mine's a little bit late, but um, not by much, but it's just a little bit later. Um, on the street, the 2.5 liter just spools this turbo up so fast. So uh, I don't know if it's wet outside or not, but we may go out and do a couple quick hits just to see how it feels. But yeah, Joe has to get used to this car because uh, he can't be missing gears at the uh, at the Pocono Slipstream event. So I'm gonna get myself out of this car now because I'm sweating. not as tall as Joe, so I have to sit on a bunch of towels and uh, sweatshirts. Normally I bring a pillow to raise my ass up, but I didn't bring my pillow today. Forgot that Joe had those seats. So, these fans off here. so yeah, again, that's, that's just what the setup is. So today was a successful day tuning this car. Just got some NT01s on here right now. Um, these are good tires. I don't personally like them. I used to have them. Um, the, the car tends to get a, a little dancy on you. It likes to jiggle a bit, go left and right at high speeds. I didn't like the NTO ones for that. Um, 
I ended up switching to the R Triple Eights a couple of years ago, and even at 150 plus, uh, the car goes dead straight. So Joe's probably going to change those tires. Um, I think he just bought these wheels off of someone, and they already had the tires on there. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I'm all set. So I'm gonna disconnect my uh, serial cable from the split second. Save these final uh, tune calibrations and uh, go test this thing out. So um, I'm probably gonna think of some other things I want to share with you guys, but if I do, I'll just edit it and throw it in there. So uh, yeah, full setup 2.5. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed just me showing you, you know, different aspects of, of the car. Um, pretty much just Joe's work and, and Speed Performance's engine here. And uh, things rock solid. You got no issues. I'm happy. He's happy. Everybody's happy. So, all right, guys. Cool. Thank you for watching. So, Nishan, now that I got you here, how do you feel about the setup that's in my car? So, the two five setup that you have, um, I like it a lot because you you gain basically 0 0.2 liters of displacement and. Um, <clears throat> What you basically get out of it is you're able to run a larger turbo and you don't have to suffer with response. That's one of the biggest uh, complaints that anybody that runs a larger turbo is going to have. Uh, I, I mean, I sometimes have that complaint, you know. Um, on my Speed 3, I have a 6266 and, you know, like, I just drive it, you know, pretty much on the street. I take it out on the highways. I take it to, you know, roll events and stuff like that. And, um... You know, I can't get the thing to spool up just by rolling into the throttle. Right. You know, there's basically no transient response, you know, and that's one thing that, you know, I do sometimes have regrets uh, going with the 62, 66 uh, sometimes. But, um, you know, I have to brake boost that turbo. I have to. You know, if I don't brake boost, I'm just going to, I'm going to get my ass handed to me. And uh, the one thing that I like about the 2.5 liter is that, you know, you have a 6062. Now, 6062, um, at least when you compare it to a 6266, it is obviously a much faster spooling turbo. But once you get to the 6062, like for example, like a 5858, 5558, those turbos are like a lightning bolt, man. They just come to life so fast. The 6062 is when you really start to notice, uh, at least on the 2.3 liter uh, Dizzy MZR. A little bit of lag. Yeah, you start to notice a little bit of lag. Um, and then when you go to 6266 or any 66 turbine, uh, precision turbo you really start to notice the lag um, and uh, you really start to feel like okay wow I got a pretty big turbo on this thing um, you know when you first uh, did the 2.5 on your car I remember you had a 5858 and yeah. then you ended up putting the 6062 in because you knew you, you were gonna go at least for over 600 horsepower yeah. and um, you know when we drive that thing it's just instant man you know the transient response is the damn transient transient response that I love so much about the setup you just roll into the throttle, and, it goes. and boom. Like, you and I, we raced. I was driving my uh, my 2018 Mustang 5 liter, and, you know, when you were on 93 octane, you were making, what, it was 496 horsepower. My yep. Mustang makes 500 horsepower. And I thought I was going to get the hit on you, and just boom, you were right there with me, and you didn't even brake boost. You know <laughs> like, what I mean? Yeah. I would never be able to do that in my Speed 3 with a six, with my 6266. If I brake boost, it's a different story, but I have to brake boost, you know? And uh, so that's one thing that I really like is you just lay into the throttle and the boost is right there, you know. Um, so the transient response is really cool. That's my personal um, favorite aspect of the setup that you have. The right. turbo's sized, I think, perfectly for what your goals were for the car. And, um, and then the 2.5 liter just, you know, makes it, it's kind of like icing on the cake. Makes it easier know? to do. Yeah, everything. exactly. That's, that's one thing that I really like about it. Now, compared to the 2.3, do you think the 2.5 is anything special? Um, not necessarily. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are, are going to be thinking that, like, oh, it's a 2.5 liter Monster Speed 3. It's so cool. It's so different. But, like, look, at the end of the day, it really isn't anything special, you know. Um, it's just a larger engine. It's just a bigger displacement. Um, the 2.5 uh, comes to be a 2.5 from the stroke and the bore. So a factory 2.3 liter um or any whatever built 2.3 or whatever the case is, um, the bore size is 87 and a half millimeter and the stroke is uh, 94 millimeter. Yeah, it's 94 millimeter. And um, the 2.5 you have in yours, uh, that's Speed Performance built for you, is a 100 millimeter stroke and you have an 89 millimeter bore. So uh, it's it's really like a 2.48, but we 
we just rounded up to 2.5. Yeah. But if you're being technical, it is a 2.48 uh, liter displacement engine. Um, so in reality, what's special about it? It's just a bigger engine. It's got more displacement. Um, there are a few aspects to it that do make the setup better in a way, but not necessarily better because everybody always thinks what's better, what's better, what's the best, what's the best. And really when it comes to turbochargers, engine sizes, engine configurations, anything to do with, with the stuff that basically I work on, um, something isn't always better because it's, it, there's always going to be a reason. So for example, the way I like to look at it is different setups are more utilized or, or, or more beneficial towards the purpose of the car and what the engine has to do for what you're using the car for. So for example, um, uh, I'm trying to think like, let's say you want to run a larger turbo, right? But you don't want to have a sacrifice response. So now you have to go with a smaller turbine housing, right? Smaller AR ratio turbine housing. So you want to get at least, you don't want to sacrifice too much response. You want this thing to spool up decently well. Somewhat decent. You yeah. want some transient response so that you can get response from the turbo as you lay into the throttle. Maybe you're doing circuit racing, maybe you're doing autocross, maybe you're doing, you know, drag racing is a whole other different thing. I'll get into that too. Uh, maybe it's just a street car. And um, the thing is, when you go with a smaller turbine housing, you're going to suffer top end because. Uh, the back pressure in the in the uh, in the exhaust system is going to build up yeah, uh, at a much lower RPM than it would if it was a larger housing. So the 2.5 really kind of what what it gets you is is you're able to run a larger turbo so that you can make a lot of horsepower, um, but you don't have to really sacrifice response because it's just the motor it's does so it instant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know because the engine's a, the engine essentially is a bigger pump, so the engine itself can only pump 2.5 liters of air. That's it. You know, um, now depending on the density of the air charge, that's gonna, you know, that's basically uh, provided by the turbo, the turbo's compressor. But as a pump, the engine can only pump 2.5 liters of air at 100% efficiency. So um, what ends up happening is, is you end up getting um, the the turbocharger up to speed faster because the, uh, the the turbine pressure is increased, you know, at a lower RPM because what a 2.3 liter can flow volumetric flow wise, let's say at 3,500 RPM, is less than what the 2.5 will pump out at 3,500 RPM. So that brings your turbine pressure up earlier on, and uh, that's what really gets the turbo up to speed a lot faster. So, like, like I said, you know, the 2.5 is nothing special, but um, it is better suited for people who need that sort of response, you know. Um, now, if you have a 2.3, you can still get that response. You're just going to go with a, lower, a smaller size turbo. But uh, you know you may fit in that category where the smaller size turbo doesn't you know have enough airflow capability for the power that you want to make. So you know it's kind of like a there's a fine line there, but uh, it, it does fall into you know certain levels of racing that some people may want. What do you think about the um, the fuel setup that I have in the car? Do you think it's efficient enough for the power I'm making? Is is there anything that you would have done differently or you know? So the fuel setup you have, in my opinion, is perfect. It's ideal. Um, I always love the search tank setups on stock fuel, uh, stock fuel tank cars, or at least someone who's not looking to, you know, basically go crazy, but and drop a fuel cell, you know, car. yeah, or drop a fuel cell. Now yeah. that, you know, that's that's by all means, you know, that's again, that's a different level of. Uh, you what know, this person wants to do. Exactly, correct. You know, maybe you want to drop weight, take the stock tank out. You know, so there's there's definitely many ways you can go about it. Um, for someone like you and what you have your car for, you know, it's basically, you know, it's not a, you don't daily drive your car, but you could if you wanted to, yeah. you know. But, um, you know, yours is a street-driven car that you just like to take out, turnkey, enjoy it. Um, you know, you don't want to go through the hassle of, of taking the whole uh, factory uh, fuel tank out, doing a fuel cell, do all that stuff. Um, so for what you have, it's perfect in my opinion, because all you have to do is just install a small little search tank, you know, in the trunk, run some fuel line and, you know, just kind of plumb everything the right way and you pretty much have, you know, an awesome setup. Uh, the one thing that is really beneficial from it is, um, you know, you don't have to worry about, uh, fuel starvation and, uh, starving the engine of fuel. Um, you don't have to worry about cavitating the fuel pump. Um, 
just having the car shut off on you on a turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually seen that happen. I've seen that happen where uh, uh, I had a customer of mine with a Speed 3, and he had a, um, a drop-in 450 uh, pump, uh, like what I have in my Speed 3. And uh, he was getting really low on fuel. Uh, he wasn't going full throttle, but he was trying to get to a fuel station. And uh, I remember what ended up happening. It started to start to put on him a little bit, you know, because uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember actually here. I was behind him. I remember hearing it hiccup and, and putt and whatnot. Um, so yeah, the search the search tank is is really cool setup for what you have. Um, like I said, it's just perfect for a street car in my opinion, um, or even 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 a race car. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just nice because you can implement it without doing too much work and really messing up the stock, uh, you know, fuel system or the fuel configuration. And, uh, you know, like I said, you could be on an eighth tank of fuel, you know, as long as the intake pump continues to fill that surge tank, uh, you're not going to have a problem, you know, and you have a, uh, you have a 525 liter per hour pump, the, uh, the TI uh, Hellcat 525 pump in there. And uh, that thing really impressed me, actually, because, uh, like I said, I have the 450 and I've tuned a lot of cars with the 450. And, um, you know, we usually start to max that thing out uh, just like right around where your power level is at, you know. Uh, you know, and that's just at 13 and a half volts. Um, nobody really wants boost the pumps on these cars. Um, although you could. Um, nobody really does. But, uh, yeah, no, that fuel pump you have really, really impressed me. Um, you know, you still have more fuel capability. You can still go more. Uh, you can still turn the power up more, but obviously we're getting really, really close to the limitations of the turbo, so that's why we really didn't go any further. But uh, now the fuel setup is ideal, and uh, if you want to make more power than that, all you have to do is just get, uh, excuse me, you just need to get the bigger radium search tank that can hold dual pumps, and you can put dual World War 450, dual 525s, whatever the hell you want to do. Um, the one downside to the search tank setup is that the fuel tends to get really, really hot, and that's because you have a, a constant duty pump, a pump that's continuously running, um, sitting in a small, you know, volume, and uh, so you know the the fuel the, the fuel pump, you know, is generating heat because it's producing work, and uh, so that's heating up the fuel. So uh, you may notice, you know, that the fuel the fuel I'm sorry the the fuel search tank gets hot. But when you're running ethanol, that tends not to happen because of the properties of alcohol. So, um, yeah, if you ever go back on gasoline, just pump 93 and drive around for a while, you'll notice that search tank is going to get pretty hot. And obviously, we don't want to really, you know, heat up the fuel unnecessarily. Um, you know, that's not a good thing. Um, but when you're on alcohol, um, even on E50, it it makes, yeah, even on E50, it makes a difference. Um, but yeah, when you're running E85, yeah, that, that search tank stays a lot cooler, a lot cooler. So, um yeah, I'm really happy with that setup. So awesome. My last question for you: um, Would you recommend the two five for others? Um, I would. Uh, the reason being is some people may be able to utilize it um, and be able to use use it for their exact needs. And what do I mean by that? <clears throat> So let's just let's take let's take away from having a two five in a, in a speed three. Let's say you have it in a speed six, right? Speed six is all wheel drive. Um, obviously, the speed six uh, has <laughs> far significantly less traction problems than a speed three, right? So on a speed six, you can you can basically throw tons of torque at the uh, at the wheels and not really worry about spinning, you know? So um, phone's ringing. Uh, where was I? Yeah, the phone was ringing. Um, so yeah, for speed six, you know, if we wanted to, we could bring the power in even earlier. And because we have the 2.5 liter uh, assisting us in spooling up this turbo, we can bring the boost in even faster. And that'll make a lot more torque. Um, you know, the, you can make the most torque by basically trying to fill the cylinders with the densest, the most dense air charge um, at the lowest RPM possible. And the reason for that is because at a lower RPM, the engine isn't moving as fast, so therefore the intake valves aren't as open, or are, are rather they're open for a longer period of time. Open closing slower. Exactly. Well, correct. Yes. So we have more available time or latency to fill the cylinders with air. Um, you know that's why a stock turbo is able to make so much torque, but not a lot of horsepower because it spools up at such a low RPM, and at a low RPM when the engine's not pumping uh, at a very fast rate. We're able to fill the cylinders with a ton of air, 
you get tons of cylinder pressure, and then boom, you have a ton of torque. Um, then obviously it dies off up top because it just runs out of airflow capability and, uh, and even exhaust flow. But um, that's one thing that the 2.5 liter does really well. Um, now obviously this isn't the first 2.5 liter that I've tuned. It's not the first 2.5 liter that uh, the guys at Speed Performance have, have put together. Um, they had a 2.5 liter in their shop speed 6 a few years back that they ran 10 something with. I forgot what it was. I think 10.4. Um, uh, there was another one they did, then there's your car, and then uh, they also had a 2.5 liter in their Focus ST. Um, they don't have it in there anymore, but they did at one point. And um, so, you know, uh, it, one really cool thing about it was we could put as big as like a 6466 on there. And, uh, you know, we still didn't really feel. Phone's ringing again, you believe this, man? So, <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we were able to put, uh, you know, a 6466 on there. And that, that's a significantly large turbo for a four-cylinder, you know? Um, or at least a street-driven uh, four-cylinder. And, uh, you know, cars, on, that's not a dedicated race car. So, you know, you can, let's say, for example, you can put this in, in, let's say, a Focus RS or EcoBoost Mustang or Mazda Speed 6. Any one of these cars that can that utilize, you know, this, basically, basically this, this uh, you know, this Ford block. Um, and make it streetable. And make, you know, it, it's really cool because, you know, Cars like that, all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, you know, they benefit the most from being able to get the turbo up to speed really fast, make tons of torque, and, you know, that helps with drag racing. You know, let's say you have this in a, in a Mustang, right? Um, you know, let's, let's just, for example, let's say it's an automatic Mustang, right? If you're able to load that turbo up and get, make so much torque off the line, you know, you're going to cut such an amazing 60-foot, or at least you'll be able to have the power to cut such an amazing 60 foot and, and have your short track be really, really fast. Um, let's say somebody who might be circuit racing, autocross, you know, they can put a respectable size turbo on the car, um, have a lot of high RPM power because they have a large turbo with a large turbine housing and a large turbine. So therefore they're able to make high, high R, I'm sorry, high RPM power and actually hold that power. Um, and uh, that can benefit them because then, you know, when they shift into the next gear, their drop back the RPM is even higher. So they're back into their power band and uh, they don't have to suffer with response. You know, they can have amazing transient response. So that's uh, that's one thing that, you know, may be beneficial for people. So, um, you know, it's got its application, you know. Right. Um, I think it's a cool setup in your car. Um, you know, it, it allows you to run that 60-62 and really spool it up fast. Uh, I don't know if it's raining outside, but we're, we we should go out and uh, do a couple hits. So probably nice. gonna blow the tires off the third gear because look, I hate those tires so much, man. <laughs> you gotta get our triple eights. I hate those tires. But um, yeah, we should go out and, and do a quick little test hit on them. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I saw it when I raced your your Speed Three on ninety three Octane with my Mustang, and. I, I thought I had you, man. I thought I had you right off the go, and then you were just right there with me the whole time. You, I didn't even jump an inch on you, you know. And that's that's kind of when I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, it was my, a good race. my 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 car would have never done that. You know what I mean? And uh, not without running a smaller turbo, you know, a significantly smaller turbo. You know, I, I would say that your sixty sixty two and the two five hits like a fifty five fifty eight on a factory two three, which is you know. 55, 58 spools so fast. So, yeah, like I said, the 2.5 has got its application. Um, you know, so if uh, if somebody, you know, kind of falls into that category and that's what they're looking to do, um, yeah, I, mean, I would just hit the guys up at Speed Performance. I, know, I don't know if they have um, that available yet, but I, I remember when I was speaking with Pablo before, um, he did mention that I think they're coming out with a 2.5 liter engine program, um, probably stage one and stage two. I don't know. It may only be stage two, or what, what I think. I, I really don't remember. It may it may only be a stage two build with uh, 26 18 pistons. But um, yeah, I would just hit them up and, uh, and see what they got. But yeah, like I said, if a 2.5 liter is what you want to go with, um, I have no problem with it. You know, I've tuned many of them. It's easy to tune. Uh, no real issues that I've ever seen. Um, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty plug and play, and um, you know, I'm more than happy to work on one. So, nice. I like it, and uh, 
I think that we should uh, stop interviewing me and probably go into your car because I don't know how the hell you're sitting there right now knowing your car just made damn near 700 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out on the street. I'd be out right now, man, doing a pull. So All right. let's, get the, let's get the hell Sounds out of here. Sounds good to me, man. All right. Thanks for your time, Nisha. No problem. One week later. All right, so the weekend's gone by, and um, Joe's had the opportunity to, you know, just kind of drive the car a bit, get used to the power. Um, uh, he told me he got into a couple races uh, the other night, and, uh, you know, the car just flies. So, um, but sure enough, Joe sends me a message and tells me that he really would like to see what the 6062 can kind of do uh, if we were to push it a little bit more. Um, so I, I did tell him that we very likely maxed out the wastegate spring. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but uh, he had a, a one bar spring in there. So that's a 14.5 PSI uh, spring in the wastegate. And um, I told him to switch it to an 18 pound spring um, or a 19 pound spring actually, I told him to switch to. Uh, he doesn't need any more because um, that turbo is very, very close to pretty much being maxed out. So. Uh, Joe's on his way here. He'll be here in a couple hours and um, I'm gonna swap the wastegate spring and then basically see what it can do. Um, go figure. I knew this was coming. I should have known better. But uh, we'll see Joe here in a few hours and then I'll show you what, uh, what we do with it after we swap, swap the spring in there. All right, change the wastegate spring. Joe's car's back on the dyno and uh, Made a quick adjustment to the calibration to account for the few extra PSI of spring pressure we have. And um, we're gonna see what it does now. <clears throat> and uh, just kind of take a look at if the extra boost um, is worth it and what kind of trade off it gives us. So uh, we're gonna see what that does here right now. Ninety, six ninety is where you were at previously, which was at uh, thirty-seven pounds of boost to redline. <clears throat> then uh, I made one small adjustment, and we made six ninety-seven, and uh, now I've got the boost holding just shy of under forty psi by redline, and we're at seven hundred and twelve horsepower. So uh, the difference here is about. 2 PSI, 2 to 2.5 two PSI, and uh, we've got an increase of about 22 horsepower. 
So uh, we're starting to see diminishing returns. And um, this is kind of exactly where I thought it would land, uh, just having tuned so many other 6062 setups. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just uh, take a quick uh, review of the data log and see how it looks. Um, see if we just need to add any more fuel or anything like that. But um, most likely this is uh, right around the, um, the limit. So let me take a look at that and then update you guys once again. All right, so after looking at the log real quick, um, we have a, a three PSI increase from 690 to 712 horsepower. And um, that's pretty much a roughly like seven and change uh, horsepower gain per PSI of boost. So um, the turbo's probably got, I don't know, just a few horsepower left in it but we're pretty much kind of hitting a limit of like what the stock cams can do at least for a 6062 um turbo uh, stock cams can still be pushed uh, a little bit more but we're really starting to see a lot um some diminishing returns here you can even look at the log there at uh basically 7800 rpm we're right around 39 pounds of boost um, it's actually like 39 and a half and uh the temperature is not far off from when we tuned it uh, a few days ago i think it was like 87 now it's about almost 81 degrees so we're in very similar um, atmospheric conditions so we got to 712 um i'm happy with that but uh i don't like to keep things right on the raggedy edge there so i'm just going to put the file back in it that made 690 because this car was loving life um or the setup was loving life at that uh, boost level. So, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it at. It's cool to see. Um, the wastegate spring did help a little bit. Um, brought the boost in a little bit earlier, but that could also be because of, you know, the 7, 8, 9 degree uh, temperature drop as well. So, um, I'm not going to really uh, call that uh, the result of the wastegate spring because even on the one bar spring, um, we were just able to manipulate that through uh, duty cycle to the wastegate solenoid. So it's probably just because it's a little bit cooler. I'm not actually sweating today. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much where we're at. And um, you know, I'm still glad that we tried it. Got to take a look and just kind of see what it could do. Um, so I mean, I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, throw this back on the uh, 690 map that we were at. And um, pretty much call that a day and uh finally we can call this card done and it's not raining today maybe we'll get some cool video all right so i finally wrapped it up all i really had to do was just kind of polish up the tune on it um really just for um i respect the boost control because of the little bit of a stiffer spring in there so um i ended up just leaving it at 700 horsepower 552 foot pounds of torque um, for those of you wondering, since this is a 2.5, um, we could bring the boost in even sooner and we would get a ton of torque here. And then what we would likely be able to do is be able to make peak horsepower a lot sooner and kind of hold it flat. But this is a speed three, so uh, I'm not trying to make this car completely useless. Um, Joe, you still need to change these tires, man. I'm gonna get on you if you don't change these. Um, so yeah, if I wanted to, I could, but that is not the purpose here. Um, but because it is a 2.5 and we were able to bring the boost in a lot faster, the reason the torque curve rounds off right here and holds flat, that's because of my boost control. So I've controlled boost to not come in and hit that 38, 39 pounds of boost, uh, super early on. So it's, it's really what it is, is it's tapered. Uh, what ends up happening is, is right around 4,500 RPM, uh, we're only about 33 pounds of boost, then we're about uh, 35 pounds of boost, then about 36, 37, and then 38, 39, all the way up top by uh, 7,800 RPM. So uh, we call that uh, a reverse taper, and um, we do that to control torque. It's a way of, uh, or it's a means of torque control. So remember, it's a front-wheel drive car, so... We don't want this thing to be completely useless, otherwise it's just a complete waste of time. So, Joe, I'm ready. Let's go take it back out. 
I know it's not really much different than where we were at before, but it was good to see, you yeah. know. And you got to remember, you still have stock camshafts in this thing. So, you know, kind of have to respect that. It's not worth it to just continuously push it and push it and push it, you know. Um, the, clearly, if the boost goes up, then the compressor wheel is still able to flow more air and fill that manifold. Because remember, boost is just a measure of restriction. It, it's a measure of how much air isn't in the motor. It's a measure of how much air is in the manifold. And... Uh, we only picked up about seven and a half horsepower per PSI boost. So, you know, we're probably basically getting real close to the limitations of the turbine housing and wheel size of this turbo, as well as, well, stock camshafts aren't helping the situation. Let's, let's word it that way. So I'm happy, man. You're done. There's nothing more we need to do. Go fucking enjoy this thing. And uh, it's going to rip uh, at Slipstream. Pocono Raceway. I think you're going to give some GTRs a run for their money. You know? Maybe a couple boosted Corvettes. You know? That's stuff like that. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Let's get her off the dyno, man. Put her on the street where she belongs. All right, we finally made it out to Mexico. It took us about 19 hours to drive here, but we made it. And uh, I want you guys to uh, take a look see what the transient response of this uh, setup is like which is something you really can't show on a, on a dyno chart um, when Joe gets in it he's gonna hear how quickly this thing just